In this video, we're going to look at Multimedia Sciences Terminal Velocity Demo. In this demo, we're going to look at a number of situations where uh, objects are dropped with no air resistance, uh, when there's a large rock, a human, a baseball, and a mass. In each case, there's a simulation. In this case, there's no air resistance. As you see, the object will start to speed up. You see the acceleration stays the same as the object increases its velocity. And then we'll look at a number of different, let's look at the human. You can see now there is some air resistance. And as we start it, you can see that as the air resistance operates, the uh, acceleration does decrease because of the friction of the air, the air resistance. And as the object increases its velocity, at some point the air force and the force of gravity are equal, which means that we will come to a zero acceleration. You can also look at a mouse. In this case, a mouse, you can see the air resistance is such that uh, the mouse will reach an acceleration very quickly. Uh, I've been told that you can drop a mouse off of a 10-story building, and the mouse may, may hit the, the ground and walk away relatively unharmed. There's also a graph for each of these situations. So here's the no resistance case. You can see we're getting essentially a straight line, which is what we would expect if there was no air. And if you took the slope, of course, you would get the 9.8 meters per second squared. For the um, other situations, you will get a curve. where the velocity is decreasing because of the air resistance and the point at which the curve reaches a horizontal line is the point of terminal velocity. And what you can do is you can actually take the simulations and stop every second or two seconds or three seconds, uh, it's up to you, and then graph the velocity that you get. And there is a worksheet that's included in, in, to enable you to do just that with your student. So here's the worksheet which um, we would, you would ask your students to fill in the force of gravity and force of air resistance on the ball as it falls and put in some probably somewhat fake numbers to show exactly what's happening. Here is a graph, and here is the data table. The students can put in the velocities for the simulations. And they should, of course, get a um, graph of a straight line and varying uh, slopes of graphs reaching terminal velocities. It's a nice exercise. OK, as a finale, you can have students play the terminal velocity game. They um, have to try to match and put in order which objects have what terminal velocity. And it's pretty tricky because it's not totally simplistic. Uh, it's dependent on the shape, the buoyancy. There's a lot of factors that go into it. There are some directions. And then you can check to see which ones are correct. And then it tells you which ones are low and which ones are high. So I found my students really enjoy this. It's kind of a challenge at the end to see whether or not they've got a good feel for the uh, variables that determine the terminal velocity. So if you're interested in the terminal velocity demo, 
please go to the Teachers Pay Teacher site at this, this URL. Um, note that Multimedia Science has a lot of other materials, uh, software, simulations, games, challenges, experiments in the area of chemistry and physics. Also, uh, Multimedia Science makes a number of game-making software. 